how you can make an envelope using a free program. And the digitals that I'm using are from Carolyn Crafttree on Etsy. I'll be using two of her kits. One is an envelope template, and the other one is a coffee dyed lace paper kit. And both of those links will be down below in the description box. And I'm going to, let's see if I can get back to it, going to show you how to do this using Pixlr X. There's two, there's probably two or three versions of this. There's Pixlr X, as you can see here, and Pixlr E. Today we're going to use Pixlr X because that's probably easier program to use of the two. And uh, what you want to do is start out by creating new, clicking over here to the left, create new. And I set my page to 2550 pixels by 3300 pixels. And then I hit create. And that, what that gives me is an 8.5 by 11 sheet. So now, uh, over here to the left, I want to introduce you a little bit to this layout. Over here to the right, I mean, is your navigate, and you can open and close these little windows. Uh, your navigate pane, and this will show you what's on your screen right here, that your working screen. The layers is also really important because here is where you can choose what happens to each layer, how it's stacked, you know, one on top of the other, and if you want to reverse that. And also, uh, these buttons will help you uh, move a layer once you get more than one in there, move a layer up or down easily, or you can just grab, you see how that turned into a four arrow um, sign, then that also helps you drag and drop wherever you want it. Your history just tells you what was the last action that you did, and you can back up if you need to through here or do hit undo which is my best friend in this program <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna do is go to wherever you have uh, your digital stored and uh, if you don't have these particular digitals uh, go over to Caroline Crafttree's uh, link uh, will be in the description box to her Etsy store and purchase those download them to your computer Unzip the file if there's anything to unzip, and I'm pretty sure you, you, you do have to unzip one. Because you cannot use the PDF version that she has in the file. You have to unzip her JPEG uh, versions. And so you, once, you once you've done that, you add the image. You go here, you click this bottom one with the little mountain, and then it gives you three options. You can browse your computer. You can go to the URL or you can use the Pixlr stock images. And I have it on my computer, so I'm going to browse my computer for this file. And hopefully it lands in the right file section. And my computer's a little slow. So here's her coffee dyed paper. And so I'm going to bring that in. I'm going to choose this one. Wait a minute. Let's, I'm going to choose this bottom one, page 11. And when you bring things in, what you want to do is add it to the current page that you have open. Because if you click Create New, it will give you a whole new uh, document. And it'll be sized differently, maybe, and, you know, it'll, it won't be this document. So once you start adding, Add to Current. And then you get this. Now, once you're here, you see how this layer is now a new layer that you've added, and it's highlighted in blue. That's how you can tell which layer you're on. You see, you click on it. You can also drag and drop your layers on top of each other, above each other. So once you have your paper in there, I want it to you know, flip around to where it fills the whole eight and a half by 11 sheet, the right, uh, lat portrait set, portrait ways. So instead of grabbing it from here, which I can do, and then just drag it over and kind of guess at what 
<laughs> where I need to land it on. I want I want to do it really simple. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hit this four arrow, which is called arrange. Okay, once you click on that, then you get to choose how to flip it. So I'm just going to flip it to the right and it automatically does it if you're on the right layer. Flip it to the right. There we go. And if you're not on the paid version, which I am not, you get these ads down here, which are very annoying, but you know, it's free, so I'll have to live with it. So once you get that layer done, then I'm going to go back out and again add another image. And this time I'm going to browse for the folder that I want to use. The folder is in the same envelope templates. Here I am. Now if I try to click the, the PDF that Carolyn provides for us, it's not going to work. Okay, so it, uh, she also provides a zipped folder of the templates. So once you have these, which they will look like that, like a folder zipped up, if you click on them, not while you're doing this, but in your if you search your computer before you do this, before you even start, then you can right click on them and and you get a drop down menu where you can choose uh, extract all. Once you hit extract all, it puts another exact duplicate of that um, file or envelope in that same file folder. So you don't, you know, you don't have to go looking for it. Where did it land and all of that. So once you get it in there and opened, then you click on that. And if y'all need a better explanation or even an extra little video showing exactly how you do that, just let me know down in the comments and I will gladly do one for you guys. So today I'm going to use this particular envelope because there's not a lot of extra sides to this. And uh, actually, let's see, is there another one here that might be easier? Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I think maybe this one would probably be easier, but I'm going to go ahead with, with this one because I really like that one. And hit open. Add to current. And this is what it ends up looking like. Okay, so now you're going to have to make sure you're on, on the top, top layer. Then you come over here and you hit cutout. And you choose magic cutout. Okay, once you have that, I'm going to move this tolerance because it wasn't, should be on 31. And here's your 31 right here. Make sure your remove button is chosen because if you say keep, it'll do absolutely nothing. So you have to remove. Your selection will be removed. So if I have this magic cutout and I remove it, this is what happens. I click on any area that has this color in it. And it erases everything that's within that that color. Now you can see that this also has a little bit left. So I'm going to try to zoom in and get closer to that coloring so I can click on it. And once I click on that, still haven't moved any of my settings. And then it erases it a little bit more. And you can keep zooming in and see how it left a little bit of that other color, secondary or third color. Then once I do that, I like that. I don't mind one, that one bit, so I like the way that's looking. Okay. So once you do that, now what we need to do or try to do is erase everything else. So I'm going to merge these two layers. 
so they can be one single image. So I click on those three dots on here and then choose merge down. Now there's three options here, merge down, merge visible, and flatten image. I don't want to do the flatten image, although the, it, some I've never tried to flatten an image, but I'll go ahead and choose that for you so you can see what happens, and I can see what happens. And it merges everything together. It gets rid of that uh, third transparent layer, and I really don't want to do that. So I'll undo that one, and what I want to do is merge down and see it merges the the top layer with the second layer and leaves the third layer alone so you don't have to worry about that now the next thing you can do is pick the shape cutout that's what i would do and this can get kind of tricky because this is what i hate about cutting out um, cutting out stuff from pictures is that this program doesn't isn't as nice and easy to use as maybe Shoto Photoshop is. Shoto Fop. Oh my gosh. Okay, Photoshop is, and uh, so it's not as easy to manipulate, but it can be done with a little bit of patience, and this will save you ink. And that's my objective with, with showing you how, how you guys how to do this. Because sometimes, yes, we can take um, Carolyn's two kits and print the lace pattern out and then print the envelope pattern on top of that. Because it's white, it's not going to show up. The only thing that's going to show up are the brown lines right here that you see that I've, you know, tried to leave in there. That was my whole objective in this. Because now you don't have to pass your paper through the printer twice. You can just do it once and that's it. You can also manipulate this envelope and put not just one in there, but several in this, in this one document and print that out. So you can have several documents. Now, if you don't want to erase anything else, because, you know, you can print this out. It'll print on an 8.5 by 11 sheet. And then you can use the rest, once you cut the envelope out, as little scrap bits that you can use later on in your junk journals. That's another option. But if you really want to get this envelope, let's say, nice, clean cut on a white piece of paper, and that's the way you want it to look, then this is how I do it. I hit the shape cut out and then remove. And then I'll choose the square. Now this one has straight sides, so I'm hoping it'll be a little easy. And so I start at the corner up there, and then I'm just going to run it all the way down to the bottom. Now the advertisement got in my way, so I'm going to have to stop here. And I'm going to try to get as close to the envelope without cutting off the envelope. And once I let go, it erases everything that was within that square and see how this part was left. I'm going to go ahead and erase that as well. Once I'm down here, that way I don't have to worry about it. And I can go in little by little and erase chunks. Now this is the easiest way to do, do it when you have straight sides. But as you can see, down here at the bottom, this this envelope is curved so that's not gonna and up here it has a curved line so it's not as easy to take out that part of the image but it's not absolutely horrifying or difficult the worst part has been done <laughs> the biggest part has been done now I can also draw cut out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the brush and then I'm going to make my brush as big or as little as I want. And you just slide the little, little circle up or down where it says size. Okay. 
Now, the softness, that is how strong you want the edges of that circle to be, how defined. So when I do it softer, like the increased percentage goes up to 100, I believe. Yep. It gets really soft. And see that big circle is now the only thing that's going to get cut out is that center of the circle. And the less soft you have it, it means that the edges, the true edge of that circle is going to be solid. There's not going to be any room for error. Once you cut that out, it'll cut it. And I'll show you. I'm going to set the softness here to zero. Let's just start there. And I'm going to zoom in to the bottom of this envelope where I know I need to cut out. And I want to make this circle a little bit bigger. Let's see. Yeah, that's a good size. Where am I? There we go. And I'm going to start drawing out okay, all the way to the end. And it cut out. But see, I went a little wonky there. And my envelope gets cut off. If I accidentally go in too far and click erase, you see how what I did? You can always hit undo, but there is a limit on how many undos you can go back or how many times you can undo. And I believe it's like 10 in this particular program. Now you can also, instead of sliding it, you can just inch your way across and then click on the mouse and it will erase. My computer is lagging so I'm having a hard time trying to get it to move. But you can go in there and clean this up as much as you want. But like I said, if you are the type of person like me, I'd save that extra paper and just use it for bits and scraps to make more embellishments for the, the actual jour journal that I'm making. And this is the way you can get her envelope template and use it with her, you know, her digital kit of the lace, coffee dyed lace papers. And I think they make very, very beautiful envelopes. Let me zoom out again so you can take a better look. And I wanted to show you all one more thing when it comes to shapes. This isn't a standard shape. This right here, these waves in the envelope are not a standard shape. So you kind of have to play with what you've got. But up here, if y'all can see, this up here is a, is a very elongated oval and it's cut in half because the envelope stops there. So you can go back to shapes and choose a circle. Now to aim it right, <laughs> you kind of have to start a little bit past this area where it actually, where the, the oval starts. And so I put my cursor up here and my, my circle where my cross is, is the top of the circle. So my circle's top is going to start up here, if I if I remember this correctly. And I'm going to try to draw a oval that is approximately the same size as this. Now see how I, I did that wrong? I It's not tall enough. So I have to undo but if I let go of it on top of that paper it'll eat away whatever it's it grabs so don't let you don't let it go until you're absolutely sure that that's what you want to cut away if you're if you determine oh I need to start over then don't let go go all the way to the top where there's blank area and then just release your mouse and start over so I'm going to start up here and try this one more time. 
And you can do this several times. I'm a little bit too close on that side. I'm going to try it this time right here. And I'm going to release it. And it chops off nice and even and smooth without any jagged lines. And I'm going to try this one more time up here. See if it works. And you just keep just keep at it. Just keep um, deleting as much as you can off the image. Sometimes you get a little, sometimes you get very, you know, a lot, but you can start erasing. You can start here. You don't have to start far off. And just pull it across and let it go. And once you let it go, it starts deleting. Now, if I do, let's try another method. If I do magic cutout, remove, and then click on this color, and it takes everything that's that color and removes it. This is what you don't want to do because that, in essence, is one of it's it's just one layer underneath. Okay. And that's not what we want, unless you're going for that and you want to put a different color and then yeah, that's an option. So I'll click undo. The lasso, magic lasso doesn't work here because the lace part is all on one layer and we haven't separated it yet. So the only other option is to do this to start erasing the stuff that we don't want. Now you don't have to get very meticulous with this. Like I said, you can print it from the first step. You know, once you get both of your images in, boom, send it through the printer, you're done. And if you wanna add text to the envelope, you can also do that. You press the T, you add your text, and you say, It didn't work. Let's try that again. I think I hit something wrong. Add text. Oh, there it is. Oh, it deleted it. I know. I'm hitting the backspace and it just deletes everything that's in there. So we're going to hit love. You don't like that font? There we go. You don't like this font this is where you can you can change it and pick a another font normal font when you want to pick the color of the font you go down here you click on the white circle and if you want it black you just drag that little circle underneath there well it won't, there it goes and then it changes the font or the color sorry if you want it to be a certain kind, kind of brown and you know um, the code for a certain color, uh, you can put it there because here's the code for each color that's on every inch of this color, color wheel, wheel, I guess you could call it. If you want to match a color that's already in the picture, like this color, I want my letters to be that color, but they're not going to show up very well. Uh, okay, so let's pick another color. So I click on the color chooser and I click on that. That might show up a little bit better. Or you can just click it and drag the little circle in here and then it'll change it to whatever color you land on. And that's how you can add uh, text on here. If you don't like that, you can just remove it. Undo, undo, undo. Undo is your best friend here. It is mine. <laughs> so once you have your envelope looking like you like it, then you can zoom out, make sure everything is okay. And once you hit, once you're done, you can hit save. And here is where you want to be careful on how you save your image. Now, you can save it as a JPEG, and what that does, it puts it with a white background in the back, okay? And make sure this 
quality is 100%. And then you can name your file for when you download it. If you pick PNG, it'll give you an envelope that you can put on top of something else. If you're wanting to like erase that lace part color, the lightest part, part of the color of the lace, like I did showing you the magic tool, then you can put it on top of a colored cardstock or sheet and it'll give you that color of background. That's when it's good for you to print it out as a PNG or save it as a PNG. You can save it as both JPEG and PNG. Okay. And you, once you click, once you have all this, like you like it, then you click download and you have yourself your own little envelope made with digitals from your Etsy purchases. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope you guys like this. Comment down below on what you want me to show you how to do because I want to make more videos for you guys that are trying to find different ways to use your digitals uh, from Etsy because I have a ton that I have purchased from Etsy. I'm a true believer that to support small businesses, especially the artists that are in our community for junk journals and all, all those things that go with junk journals, and I absolutely love digitals. And so I reached out to Caroline Crafttree and she she said, yeah, go ahead, as long as you tell them, which I'm about to tell you, that this is only for personal use. You cannot create these and sell them. This is her digital. And if you need permission for her to, because you want to sell these as a digital item, then you need to talk to her about that. And each individual person that you buy from, you need to look at their rules and stipulations on how you can use their digitals. So be forewarned. I know it's, I should have put it in the front of the video, but here it is. You need to use these with the permission. If you want to sell, you have to check with the person that sold you these digitals. You can't just take anything willy nilly off the internet and make it your own. You have to get permission. They have created these and they have copyright issue. There's copyright issues with these. So please do your due diligence and check with the people that you're getting your digitals from. If they're for personal use, that's what they're made for, for personal use. But if you want to sell anything, then you need to check with the creator. That's what Carolyn wanted me to, to make sure you guys understood. So, I thank you for coming and watching my video. I'm sorry I'm uh, I'm all discombobulated. I sound like I am. Uh, I haven't done a video in a very long while, so I'm trying to get into the swing of things again. And um, if you like what you see, please hit subscribe. Uh, I'm almost to 10,000 subscribers, so if you can help help me get there, I really would appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Bye bye.